Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's been 41 years since we last had a say on Britain's membership of the European Union. And if we vote to remain on Thursday, it could be another 41 years before we get another chance to vote for our freedom from the European Union. Or indeed, we may never get the chance. Remain love to claim that we are somehow little Englanders. They love to misrepresent us. And what I want to ask tonight is for them to open their eyes. So let me tonight take you around the world to show you what is going wrong because we are members of the European Union. I'll start with the United States, where the proposed trade deal between the EU and the USA, known as TTIP, wants to let American companies sue the British government. It wants to open our NHS to competition for American companies. I'm a member of the European Parliament and I'm only allowed to even view the deal if I sign a form swearing me to secrecy, leave my phone and any electronic devices behind. Or look at Canada, where the free trade deal, the entire deal between the EU and Canada that has taken nine years to negotiate is held up because of a completely unrelated argument with Romania about visas. And then there are some of the world's poorest countries in Africa, countries we should be helping through free and through fair trade, but the EU imposes punitive tariffs on them. So, for example, there's a 1% tariff if we import cocoa, but a 30% tariff if we import processed chocolate. What does that mean? It means, of course, that uh, all of the, uh, the processing takes place then within Europe and not in those countries uh, that need to be able to develop. EU policy on pesticides increases the risk of malaria. Even Oxfam in 2008 put the EU at the top of its double standards index for helping with one hand whilst harming with the other. Let's look at India, where EU-India trade relations are stalled. And again, over completely unrelated issues. There's a market there of over one billion people that we should be tapping into with a free trade agreement. But we can't. We are powerless. Because since 1975 in this country, we cannot negotiate our own trade deals. We have to wait for the EU Trade Commissioner to do it for us. The State Bank of India has openly called for Brexit because we have historic links with India and we could develop our trade if only the UK had the power to do so. Let's look at China, even Iceland, a tiny country with a population the same as Newcastle has a free trade deal with China, but we don't. We can't. We're not allowed to negotiate our own deals. Or South Korea and Australia, which have the kind of trade deals that remain tell us we could never get with mutual recognition of standards. And yet, Articles 8 and 50 of the Lisbon Treaty tell us that post-Brexit, they would want to deal with us as, our, as their friends and neighbours. How can they possibly claim that we, as their neighbours, would get a worse deal than Australia, the other side of the world, when we are the world's fifth largest economy? And then we come to Syria. I'm not going to say too much on this, only to point out that the EU's little European mindset has made things far worse. The most vulnerable people are in the refugee camps in Jordan, in Lebanon and in Turkey, but the Commission opened the doors with no plan to hundreds of thousands of people, creating the conditions for people trafficking, for suffering. And of course the women, the children, the elderly, the poor, the destitute, the sick, those in the refugee camp struggle to get help, whilst those with the money to pay smugglers and generally able-bodied young men can get to uh, Europe very easily. Uh, what about Greece, the country ravaged by debt, whose Prime Minister was forced to resign by the European Union? The EU's Troika imposing unprecedented austerity, and they are suffering unbelievable levels of unemployment. Or indeed Italy whose Prime Minister was also forced to resign for very similar reasons. We've seen the result of the EU botched foreign policy in the Ukraine, which provoked Russia and caused problems there. Everything, everywhere that the European Union touches, turns 
to dust. Yet, outside the EU, Norway, Switzerland, Iceland and Liechtenstein have prospered. Hang on a second, we are more than four times the size of those four countries put together. Of course we'll get a better deal than them, but Remain is telling us that is impossible. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, the country I really want it to be like is none of them. It's this one, it's the United Kingdom. It's time to take our destiny in our hands. It's time to take control, and it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to show that we believe in the United Kingdom. Thank you very much. Our next speaker tonight needs no introduction. It is UKIP leader Nigel Farage MEP, and I'm sure that this video will introduce him far better than I can.